Good morning and welcome to Mornings with Luann and Tim. It's Monday, just in case you needed to be reassured. It's also a huge day. This is your day to have a voice. Go and vote today. I already did. I know you did, but I'm going to do it today. I've, so do it. Oh yeah, you're a busy day. Yeah. Because we're doing the live election coverage this evening on ONNTV.ca right here. You Starting can, at 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock live. Mm -hmm. Trevor Cheer from Algoma University yes. is going to sit back in with us again and join us again as our pundit. Um, Trevor is, what, he's a professor of uh, political Canadian, science. Yeah, and I think he specializes in Canadian Canadian political history. So awesome. that'll be really interesting to so have his in. insight. Yeah, it'll be awesome as the polls close and results sort of start to trickle. And sometimes it takes a minute and then other times it's just like that. Um, so tune in and we'll sort of update you locally, regionally, and then of course what's happening on the national scene. Um, we're in far better shape politically than they are down south. Oh, you think? Holy smokes. Okay, so now the Doral, his golf course. Yes. Okay, so the G7 summit, he announced through mm. Mick Mulvaney that he, he was going to host, <clears throat> the U.S. was going to host. After Mulvaney did admit that, you know, all the funds had Trid been... Po pro quo. Yeah. That they were holding the funds because they wanted them to investigate the, mm. the server in, the, in, in Ukraine. Right. The DNC server. Anyway, so he announces that they're going to host the G7 summit at Donald Trump's supposedly bed bug ridden <laughs> golf resort. What? Oh, they've had bed bug reports. They got fined for bed bugs at the Doral. Um, really? Yeah. So, anyway, well, then. they... Um, Trump was talking about he's going to host it because it's the perfect setup and every coalition would have their own, uh, every country would have their own set of, co of rooms and stuff, their own right, block. Right. But apparently also it's like right by the airport, not near the beach. June in, oh, in Florida is, is hot and rainy. Mm. So anyway, mm. uh, lots of pushback. He's changed his mind. <laughs> Oh, and he's blaming, and it was bipartisan. Even the Republicans were saying that is such a emoluments clause, to, like you like can't to benefit yourself. Oh, but I'm going to do it at no cost. Well, that's it. no, you're not. Anyway, or at cost rather. So it's been changed, and now they're going to reinvest. Mm -hmm. they, it's always been held at Camp David, which they're right. paying for anyway. The American taxpayers pays for Camp David to be Why there. Why not just do it? Do it like they always have, and then he goes on. Um, they had the astronaut, the two female yes, astronauts. Yes, first, first time, time a team of two female astronauts. I mean, a female astronauts have done spacewalks before. They've done repairs on the outside of buildings in the past, of buildings on the outside of spaceships in the past. This is the first time, though, historically, two women have both been outside a spaceship at the same time. Mm -hmm. So Donald Trump does a little. They hook him up, and right. he's talking via to the, cool, right? to them in outer space. Yes. But he makes a mistake. He says it's the first time that women have done a spacewalk. And the woman, what the female astronaut, one of the two, corrects him. And so we have some video to show you of Trump's reaction when he gets corrected by a female astronaut. Watch him as everybody went crazy saying he flipped her the bird. See what you think. And this is the first time for a woman outside of the space station. First of all, we don't want to take too much credit because there have been many other female spacewalkers before us. This is just the first time that there have been two women outside oh at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> like, could that be a little more obvious? I would think that's pretty... And let me guess... He's going to deny that he did that. Oh, of course so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, he had a big rally. Was it in Texas? I forget. Where was his Texas, last? Texas. Yeah. Believe. Betty Buckley. Mm. And I think she's a Texan, as a matter of fact. Betty Buckley is a television star. Eight is enough. She replaced the mother figure on Eight is enough. And um, she uh, is a, a very vocal opponent of, of Donald Trump's. Yes. Um, anywhere she goes, like interviews, she just also finished the national tour of Hello, Dolly. She was the original Grizabella in Cats, won the Tony Award. Her rendition of she's, Memory is she's got some stuff on the cast recording. So anyway, Betty Buckley um, finds out from somebody on Twitter that Donald Trump played her rendition of Memory from the original cast recording of, the, of Cats' Broadway cast album at this rally. 
And she freaked out and immediately contacted Andrew Lloyd Webber and said, please make this stop. I haven't heard the upshot yet of whether or not. But I'm wondering whether or not that was done on purpose, that somebody said, hey, you want to you yeah, tick you Betty tick Buckley off? off? Yeah. Let's play her version of Memory at a Rally. He's constantly getting challenged, though, for the music, music that choices. he plays I at know. his rallies. The people who are, you know, doing the music are saying, hey, man, you didn't ask, and we don't want you to use us. Yep. Yes. Hey, we got a little bit of nastiness going on, though. Well, not nastiness, but... What happened with the Shear campaign? Tell well, me. Well, apparently Andrew Shear allegedly hired a, a firm to put out some feelers in the social media world. Looking for... Lo- and, and actually he's saying that Bernier with the People's Party... Oh, it was Maxime um, Bernier he yes, was after. And he said that he was a racist. So that that vibe was put out there. So by he was kind of looking for dirt yes. by with this company and yes. s- and spinning and the company stuff. Actually, posted things. They did. Yeah, they posted to social media. So he got called out on it, and somebody uh, I saw a reporter questioning him on it. Yes, and, and and vigorously questioning him on it, and he said, "We don't comment on contracts that we may or may not be involved with." She, she got up and, and said again, okay, so you're not answering my question. So are you afraid to answer my question? And he said the exact same thing. After taking a drink of water. <laughs> yeah, she drank a little bit of water. You know what? Not good timing, Andy. No. It doesn't look good on you. Although the one thing that he did do that I saw was at a rally, he was talking about SNC-Lavalin and then the fact that he is going, he, if he is elected, <clears throat> he intends to pursue um, have an investigation, right. like a criminal investigation, yes. into the SNC Lavalin affair, and some of his base started the "lock him up" chant about Mr. Trudeau. To which Mr. Shear really resp- I yes, I respect him for this. Put his hands up and said, "Stop! No, no. How about vote him out?" Yes. So pretty cool there. Yeah, you know what? And I have to say, it was it was uh, refreshing to see that because, of course, you know he's being compared a lot to, um, yeah, the current his American counterpart. Well, the not current the counterpart, resident of the White House, conservative down there. Yes. Okay, I came serious. across this really weird picture. Okay. It's it's a bunch of students mm-hmm. in India. Now let me see where. Not that I can pronounce anything properly. Um, Haveri, India, or oh. I don't know, Haveri, I don't know how you would say it. Uh, the, the institution is the Bagat Pre University College, okay? What? So I guess they were going to have an exam. Mm-hmm. And so they got all the students and they got boxes and they put boxes on their heads and then cut holes in the front of the boxes. And there's a picture with all these students taking this exam in India with boxes on their heads. Now there's the picture from behind. There's the teacher walking down. There's probably how could you not? How could you be serious? This about is writing this is in exam? college, and and then from the front. Well, that's a different one. That's a whole other p- experiment, I guess. So the boxes, though, th- when people asked about it, like, what are those boxes doing on those students' heads? They said it was. Uh, they said it was um, an experiment to prevent cheating. That's like putting blinders on a horse. Right? I don't understand. It's a little control. I couldn't concentrate with a box on my head. And what did you say you would do? I said I'd write all the answers on the inside of the box. (laughs) Right? Yeah. I'll show you. But like, and then Jacob said too, um, I'd be laughing so hard I wouldn't be able to write my, my exam. Right, <laughs> you're sitting there. Like I would, I would be thinking, okay, because I'm so anal, you're I'd be like trying to make sure people. I was balanced. And oh, now it's falling forward, and now I'm sitting up, and it's falling backwards, and they're gonna a think I'm on your head. And a pox a upon box you. on your head. Mm. Hey, it's Oral Dental. Oh, sorry, Ontario Dental Hygiene Week, Luann. Awesome. Did you brush yet this morning? I did. Yes, Dental. several times. Good. I do. Yeah, after I the weekend. I saw a clip on. Was it on CTV? The morning show uh-huh. and the. Just before they went live to air, they showed a clip and it was like a, a, an outtake. Yeah. And it was the female host turning to the male host saying, your breath smells. <gasps> and the guy's like, are you kidding me? I water picked, I brushed, and I only drank hot water. She said, it must have been the hot water triggered something because I prefer your coffee breath. And then they went live to air. That's kind of mean to say that. I know. That's why I was just nice to you and didn't tell you that you have halitosis. <laughs> That's awesome. Thanks Ontario so much, Ontario dental Jim. hygienists do more than... They do medical reviews, assessments of oral mm. conditions, cancer screening. Yes. my Nutrition, my halitosis. They help smoking cessation. 
and prepare uh, um, health techniques for and self care programs. So happy uh, Na Ontario Dental Hygiene Week. Go home and floss. And thank you so much to Casey Security for sponsoring the morning show this morning. We certainly appreciate it. You guys, I saw Nathan this morning. Always good to know that he's in the neighborhood watching out for me. Pumpkin Patrol's coming up too. Yes. And they're doing free on Halloween night. They'll yes. Uh, uh, okay, so listen, uh, on the show today, really cool um, two friends coming together, uh, John McClanahan, musician, and Vernon Bailey, very well known mm -hmm. in Sault Ste. Marie in the Algoma district as an auctioneer, but Vernon has some other uh, plans on the go. It's a fundraiser. Zont is involved. Check out the interview coming up after this with part one, John McLaughlin. Welcome to The Machine Shop, our historic venue and gathering place for friends and family. Built in 1899 on the site of a Northwest Company trading post. Today we are a go-to venue hosting many expos, concerts, weddings and more. While you're here, choose one of our dining experiences. Enjoy a quiet dinner at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar, watch a game in Triwood Fire Oven Pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room, or treat yourself every day to gelato and local coffee at the Gelato Mill. For more information on The Machine Shop, visit machineshopinc.ca. Last year we've been celebrating our 65th anniversary dating back to services originating in our community in 1954, which is quite some time ago. It's been a great opportunity this past year to recognize the, the pioneers, the stakeholders that worked tirelessly um, to create uh, what we are today. I'm grateful for everything that the families 65 years ago and the people that assembled the organization um, have done in order for us to achieve the success that we're experiencing 65 years later. Recently, the Government of Ontario established a $100 million affordability fund to help Ontarians who don't qualify for low-income conservation programs ease the burden of their electricity bill. Whether you rent or own your home, as long as you pay your electric bill, you could qualify. There are three levels of support available. The first is a home energy kit with upgrades like smart power bars and LED light bulbs. The second includes Energy Star appliances that help keep things cool during the hot summer months. The third is for electrically heated homes so that your power bills don't break the bank during those long Canadian winters. Plus, all upgrades including installation are completely free of charge. Visit affordabilityfund.org or call 1-855-494-FUND to find out if you qualify. back to Mornings with Lou and I'm Tim and I am joined now by the multi-talented John McClanahan. You were just reminding me that we first met over 20 years ago. Over 20 years ago, Tim, yeah. You were involved with what organization? The Country Music? Country Music Association, It was, right. uh, uh, which is now the Northern Ontario Country Music Association. It was called the Country Club back then. I yeah, think. yeah, okay, right on. And we, there was a contest and I was in it? There was, <laughs> there was a, uh, yeah, a, a talent contest or a singing contest. Oh my and, goodness. And our group did the... Uh, we had a band called the Country Club Band, obviously. You guys were the house band. And we were the house band kind of thing, and we did the backup for for the show. Did, did I did I place? Uh, you know, I can't really I, remember that. I don't I'm going to blame you if I didn't but know I think, that. Don't I you? think you did place, but that's, I don't. Well, know. Then, then I then I just take all the credit for myself. Yeah. <laughs> see, that, see how that works, John? <laughs> that works. So great. listen, Vernon's going to be on the show. The Vernon Bailey, local auctioneer, also um, actor, singer, um, and I guess philanthropist. Mm -hmm. Because you guys do a lot of uh, stuff together for fundraisers. We do. You're involved in one coming up right now with Zonta Club. Yes. So Vernon's going to come on the show later on and talk a little bit about that as well. But I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the music aspect and how this all came to be. Your musical background goes back from when you were younger, self-taught guitar, what? Yes, self-taught. And um, I actually got involved in music when I first moved to the Sioux in 1968. Wow, and, okay. And uh, I was part of a group, uh, we formed a group at that time called the Country Kings. Okay. Uh, country Music. <laughs> and um, uh, that was my first involvement in a band and, and actually getting out and singing publicly and so on. Right. So, yeah. uh, and then so over the years you've been involved in, in different bands as happens, right? One band ends, another one starts exactly. up, another group of guys get together. Yeah. Who are you playing with right now these days? 
Right now we've got a group called Perfect Blend. Oh, that's a great name. Yeah, it is a good name and uh, we uh, we do uh, some shows, some uh, dancing sh uh, shows, for example, uh, like, for like Christmas parties. And dancing like square dancing kind no, of stuff? Not, well, no, square yeah, we do. We, we do square dancing as well. Do One of the fellows plays the fiddle, so yeah, we, yeah. Yeah, we'll play some square dances. And But just if somebody, somebody wants to hire you for entertainment for a party, you guys will be there? Yeah, me. yeah we do uh, country music and 50s uh, rock, 50s, 60s oh, rock. You know. um, Busy time of year for you then, I guess, with parties coming up. But you've got a fundraiser coming up. Is it Willow Grove? Did you say? Yeah, yes, at Willow Grove on uh, on the twenty second of November, we're doing a gospel show, country gospel show, and we do several of those. So, do you? Yeah. And is that a fundraiser for Willow Grove or that, what? That's a fundraiser for Willow Grove. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. November twenty second. Twenty second. We've uh, we've done those over the last uh, ten or twelve years. I guess we've done several of them. Yeah. And you've teamed up with Vernon now. How long have you been working together? Because Vernon, in the show that you're doing for Zon. To club, uh, Vernon's doing. He's doing uh, readings, right? And um, yes, he's doing Robert Service poetry. Robert Service poetry, and it's not readings; it's all memorized. Vernon's memorized stuff. All memorized at his age. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you and you've chosen musical selections that sort of um, sort of enhance that's right the poetry right follow the poetry yeah that's right so it's it's kind of themed right these these performances you do exactly but now the songs do you do any do you do any um, original stuff at all have you ever written stuff John no no, no okay. not really no yeah no, no. so the, where do you the style of music that you're playing then how would you describe the music that accompanies the Ver, Vernon's poetry well it's uh, it, it's a oh. uh, folk uh, to country, folk country music. I guess. Okay, you said that you've done this a number of places for fundraisers. Name some of the spots that you've performed and for what? Yes, we've we've uh, performed at uh, Bruce Station uh, for Arch. Nice. We've, we're a couple of times. Yeah. Because we have another show as well as this one. Uh, we've. Oh, you have a, you have other repertoire. We do. We, this one's called the Call of the Wild, and yeah. it's Robert Service poetry. Okay. We do another one called Life on the Farm, and and it's uh, all. Um, Poetry and stories from an author out of Massey by the name of Charlie Smith. No kidding. So mm -hmm. it's all really local too, like the Algoma district. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. So where else have you played down the line, or? Yes, we played uh, down at um, a Sour Bee at the Twelve Sided Barn uh, a couple of times yeah. and raised funds there for the Thessalon Hospital site. Nice. And we played at St. Joe Island and raised funds for the Matthew site. We played in D Blind River and raised funds for the Blind River site, the hospital site. Oh, you guys. And then uh, we've done. Um, this is the first one in the sh in the Sioux, actually. The others have been down the line. So right. Yeah. So I hope we get a good good response here in the Sioux. Well, I hope so too. So now I'm going to let let you take over here, and uh, you're going to perform a song for us. Is this part of the show that you're doing with Vernon, The Call of the Wild? It is. It's this is the opening song, and okay. uh, it kind of fits with the Robert Service poetry. If anyone's familiar with Robert Service poetry, it's a lot about the North, and uh, yeah. uh, and uh, this one is called North to Alaska. North to Alaska. This is John McClenahan performing North to Alaska. Vernon, when I Vernon and I will talk later on, we'll get more information about about tickets, where you can get them, when the event is happening, and where. But right now, ladies and gentlemen, sit back, relax, and enjoy this music by John McClenahan. Thanks for being here, John. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. okay. Big Sam left Seattle in the year of 92 With George Pratt, his partner, and his brother Billy, too They crossed the Yukon River and they found the Bonanza Cold Below that old white mountain, just a little southeast of Nome Sam crossed the majestic mountains to the valleys far below he talked to his team of huskies as he mushed them through the snow With the northern lights a running wild in the land of the midnight sun Big Sam McCord was a mighty man in the year of 91 Where the river is winding, big nuggets they're finding North to Alaska they go north, the rush is on Way up north, way up north North to Alaska, they go north, the rush is on. Well, George turned to Sam with the gold in his hand. Said, Sam, you're looking at a mighty lonely man. I'd give all the gold that's buried in this land. For one small band of gold to place on sweet little Jenny's hand. 
Cause a man needs a woman to love him all the time Remember Sam, a true love is so hard to find I'd build for my Jenny a honeymoon home Below that old white mountain just a little southeast of Nome Where the river is winding, big nuggets they're finding North to Alaska they go north, the rush is on Way up north, way up north North to Alaska they go north, the rush is on North to Alaska they go north, the rush is on year we've been celebrating our 65th anniversary dating back to services originating in our community in 1954 which is quite some time ago. It's been a great opportunity this past year to recognize the, the pioneers, the stakeholders that worked tirelessly um, to create uh, what we are today. I'm grateful for everything that the families 65 years ago and the people that assembled the organization um, have done in order for us to achieve the success that we're experiencing 65 years later. Lady Gaga is now in Vegas. Yes. Performing in Vegas. She um, in a residency as a residency. Said. Yes. So she's following the tracks of what Celine Dion was probably the first at the, at the mm -hmm. MGM Grand, yeah, and then, and then uh, Bette Midler was in there. Britney oh, Spears. Britney Spears, yeah. Cher. Cher. Sure, of course. Anyway, so uh, Gaga, part of her show, I guess, she's very interactive with her audience. She calls them her monsters, I believe. Yes. Right. So at one point in the show recently, she had a, a, a gentleman on stage with her uh, come up out of the audience and he was dancing with her. Well, he got a little enthusiastic and he uh, picked her up, put his arms around her and he, and he picked her up while they were dancing and she played along and so she wrapped her legs around him while they were dancing together. Oh, here he is coming out of the audience now. Oh, and they start. Oh, look, he's, oh, he's thrilled. Oh, he's hugging her, yeah. And then She's what happens like, oh, though no. is he, he picks her up and, and he starts to bounce and his knees give out. And watch what happens. His knees give out and he falls oh! off the stage and lands on top of Lady Gaga in the crowd. That can't be good. Now, she... Ugh, no. That she, leaves a mark. She has fibromyalgia. Yes. So she has a huge routine before the show. She does like saunas and cold compresses and stuff. And then after the show's over, she does a lot of self-care as well. I mm -hmm. think, once again, like a whole body compress thing because of her fibromyalgia. So, of course, everyone was very concerned. What... A woman she get they get back up on the stage she brings the gentleman back up on the stage with her they go to her piano and she sits him down and she says I want you to do me a favor and promise me right now that you're gonna forgive yourself for what just happened she said oh. it takes two to tango and then she serenaded him at the piano oh good for her what a classy broad I love her me too I could She's be a monster just yeah, I could be a monster too. Yep. Absolutely. We've been talking a, a little bit about Elton John in the last week or so because he's releasing his new book. Me. Another thing that um, apparently he talks about is the fact that he had to deal with his husband, David Furnish's alcoholism. I didn't know that. Yeah, I didn't either. And Elton says that um, he, he kept thinking when they first hooked up that you know he's he's fallen into this lifestyle being Elton John's partner husband um, so easily and apparently 
it wasn't quite as easy as he thought. There were empty wine bottles in several of the houses that they owned together that he found and stuff like that. Was so. this after Elton had found sobriety? Yes. So Elton was sober and his yes. partner was now dealing with alcoholism. Yeah, so they, wow. they had a real row. Apparently they had this huge argument and um, uh, Furnish decided he was going to go to rehab and took care of it. So good for him. And now they've got kids and everything, eh? Yes, right? He, I also read that he couldn't go and see um, Freddie Merc uh, the, the Queen. Um, you know, the, the what's it called? We Will Rock You. Know, what was the movie called? With Freddie Mercury, uh, with Malik, what's his name? Rami Malik oh, playing yeah, yeah. Freddie Mercury. Right? Yes. What was that movie called? Remember? I don't remember. Anyway, the biopic about Freddie Mercury and Queen and how Queen mm -hmm. became. Elton couldn't go. He said, he watched a little bit of it and he said, Rami did an amazing job, but he was just too close to Freddie. He said they were really, really good oh, friends. Really? Yeah. Oh, and I it didn't was know. just too hard for him to watch it. Wow. So he was doing a great job then. Yeah. Rami. Yeah. I guess so. Because, yeah, he said he just. But didn't couldn't sit down and watch it, so wow, but Isn't that interesting? too much too close to him. Okay, this is a bizarre story. There's a woman, and she was living in her van. She was a homeless woman living in her van that was parked beside the Circle K where she worked. So mm -hmm. she lived, she parked her van, and then she would go to work. But I guess somebody reported her because there was something else in the van besides her. Over 300 rats. <gasps> oh. Oh my the God! The San Diego Humane Society had to come in and rescue the 300 rats. They're up for adoption now. That's gross. Up for adoption? Yeah. She They're rats. And they said this was not a case of animal cruelty. They were all fed and what? There, Luann. That's They're, disgusting. They were all. <laughs> she can't even look at them all. Oh my God! They were all fed and watered, but they were living not only in cages but in every crevice of the van. Bah. The van had to be hauled away, so she was really homeless. So they had somebody started a GoFundMe page. They raised five thousand dollars. Somebody actually donated a used van for her to live in, and they tried to set her up with social services to get her mm -hmm. help, and she refused all help. Said, "I just want the money to pay the six thousand dollars in bills I've accumulated in t taking care of my rats." She must be devastated. The rats are gone too. I. I'm with 300 rats. Well, I just want to know who. Germs, germs. Circle K. Right? Eee, good point. I know. Hey, what's on the news? Uh, Anything, news coming up. We're talking about, of course, today's big election oh, and, yeah. the, and the last big push for that and, and lots more. Lo some really good events over the weekend, too, that we're going to oh, tell you about. I think I might know yes. a couple of them. We had them yeah. on the show. Yeah, so the news awesome. is coming up after this. Yes, sir. The news is coming up. Please stay tuned. <laughs> a progressive government to keep fighting, not a progressive opposition. Canadians need to come together. It's voting day and party leaders were in British Columbia yesterday to make one final push for the hearts and minds of voters before today's federal election. Liberal leader Justin Trudeau made an appeal to voters in Quebec to reject the Bloc Québécois and accuse the sovereigntist party of reopening old debates instead of moving forward. Conservative leader Andrew Scheer also warned against the Bloc while saying Trudeau also had a part to play in creating a divided Canada. NDP 
leader Jagmeet Singh claims divisions have been caused by successive liberal and conservative governments favoring the wealthy over everyday Canadians. And we just got a very clear reminder of that last night in Quebec, where the Bloc Québécois came out and said that its number one priority is separation, is dividing the country once again, not even the fight against climate change, not even uh, to stop conservative cuts, but to revive old debates that we move past. We need to work together. I must address the Bloc Québécois leader's speech, sovereignty's speech from last night. At the 11th hour of this campaign, he's admitted what we've known all along. His first priority after the election is to work with the Parti Québécois towards a new referendum. That means that a vote for the Bloc is a vote for a referendum. Another sign of the divisiveness that Justin Trudeau has cultivated in our country. Turning province against province, region against region. We're going to continue to do what we've always done, and that is to promote a positive campaign. Uh, full of positive ideas that will help make life more affordable for Canadians. Help Canadians reach their goals and live out their dreams. And that is really the choice tomorrow. A choice between an NDP Liberal coalition that will run massive deficits, make life less affordable, more expensive, leave less money in your pocket, or a conservative government that will lower taxes, get back to balanced budgets, and help make life more affordable. That is the choice tomorrow, and I'm asking Canadians for their support. The division we're seeing, I believe, is a result of economic insecurity. The fact that more than half of Canadians report that they are in a really tough way, that they're just on the edge of not being able to pay their bills, and that they're worried about the future. And all these worries and fears create divisions, or Worries and fears allow others to come in and to divide us based on things that are not the reason for the problems. We are here today because liberal and conservative governments have, have favored the wealthy and powerful over families, given them massive exemptions and tax loopholes and offshore tax havens. It's because of those decisions that we're here. Hordes of the undead took to the streets of the Sioux on Saturday evening. It was all part of the 10th annual Zombie Walk. Participants gathered at the Bush Plain Museum for activities such as face painting, games, music, and short acts from the upcoming play Evil Dead the Musical. They then lumbered along down Bay Street, looping to Queen, where they made a stop at Pita Pit before heading back to the Bush Plain for more fun, including a haunted maze. So today is our 10th annual Sioux Zombie Walk. Uh, it's a really big deal for us. 10 years is a long time. Um, we had to take a hiatus last year and did a fundraiser and we're back and we used all the money that we were able to earn from that um, to be able to do this. And with the vendors and all the local businesses collaborating with us, uh, we were able to come here today to be able to uh, host another zombie walk. Today we have from three to seven basically activities, vendors, different crafts. We have a bunch of different kinds of things like that. We have live music, we have the art, the Evil Dead Theatre group, they're going to be doing two different skits. Well, it originally started because Jana loved zombies. She is the creator of the zombie walk. Just kind of progressed from there. Uh, nowadays, it's just a matter of we're all a bunch of nerds that just were into zombies, uh, with the exception of our committee member Brandon, who's absolutely into the resistance. He basically oversees all of the resistance uh, and striker. Anyone in camel or who's anti zombie, he is the one that coordinates all of those lovely people. <laughs> and which is really a benefit to the Sioux Zombie Walk because during our walk we do have a mock battle where zombies and the resistance are actually able to have a play battle and we wouldn't be able to have that if it wasn't for the resistance. I, I hope that the zombies are going to be going one way and the people that aren't the zombies are going to go the other way and when they meet up it's just going to be like traffic or something. Yeah, we're just going to be ambushed which is sad. I am a mad st scientist, and I'm just a zombie, or I'm just a human that got half eaten in space by zombies. So I came back half and half. <laughs> uh, so we've teamed up with the Sioux Zombie Walk, um, Pita Pit, this is our third annual year participating. So when the zombies go on the walk, they always do a pit stop here, and we just uh, come together as a community to help uh, 
with the event? We've got to like hang out some stuff outside, hang some stuff like in here, like a little photo booth. And we got to have fun with blood. <laughs> uh, well, my favorite part was eating some of the candy, which was really fun. And my other favorite part was when like we just all like came together to make this. Um, we decided to partner with the zombie committee basically because our courtyard is the perfect spot for a spooky zombie apocalypse um, and we just really wanted to partner with the zombie walk because they are doing the food drive for the community and it's just a great cause to be involved with. Police west of Toronto say a 15-year-old boy is suffering from life-threatening injuries after a stabbing last evening. Peel Regional Police say they're investigating the incident at multiple scenes in Brampton that are several kilometers apart. They say a call came in reporting the stabbing at about 7.50 p.m. Investigators say the boy was taken to hospital. They say a 15-year-old boy was also taken into custody and note that this was an isolated incident and there's no threat to public safety of youths had congregated and were fighting. So when officers attended, we located two victims, one inside a grocery store here and one outside in the parking lot. They were both uh, suffering non-life-threatening stab wounds. After dropping the game Saturday night, the Hounds looked to bounce back from the 7-4 loss at the hands of the Barry Colts, this time turning their attention to the North Bay Battalion. The Hounds made short work of the battalion, taking them down 11-2, scoring four goals off of a major power play. Zach Trot led the way offensively for the Hounds with a four-point performance, while Etha Taylor picked up the win between the pipes. Welcome to the Machine Shop, our historic venue and gathering place for friends and family. Built in 1899 on the site of a Northwest Company trading post. Today we are a go-to venue hosting many expos, concerts, weddings and more. While you're here, choose one of our dining experiences. Enjoy a quiet dinner at the Mill Steakhouse and Wine Bar, watch a game and try wood fire oven pizza and local draft at the Boiler Room, or treat yourself every day to gelato and local coffee at the Gelato Mill. For more information on the Machine Shop, visit machineshopinc.ca. In your home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room. Create privacy, or both, automatically. No hands required. So your shades will always be in the right place, at the right time, in style. And it's only from Hunter Douglas. This past year we've been celebrating our 65th anniversary dating back to services originating in our community in 1954, which is quite some time ago. It's been a great opportunity this past year to recognize the, the pioneers, the stakeholders that worked tirelessly um, to create uh, what we are today. I'm grateful for everything that the families 65 years ago and the people that assembled the organization um, have done in order for us to achieve the success that we're experiencing 65 years later. In your home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room. Create privacy, or both, automatically. No hands required. So your shades will always be in 
the right place at the right time in style. And it's only from Hunter Douglas. Here, your education is everything. Supporting your true sense of purpose. Here, you'll learn from professors who will understand you, who will challenge you, and offer you support on your journey. Here, you'll study programs built on real values. Business, technology, science, arts and social sciences. Always geared to make a positive difference. Here, you'll have a chance to assist in faculty research, leaving your mark wherever you go. Here, you'll focus on what matters to you and impact the world around you. Algoma University. Come take a closer look. This is so cool. Finally, the trailer for the movie that Vin Diesel just did called Bloodshot has been released. It looks really, really intriguing. What kind of movie is it? Well, he's, he's um, it's action. I mean, Vin Diesel. He's got to punch something, right? <laughs> and that's what he does. And he does actually talk. As Does well. he speak as yeah, well? Yeah, he speaks. So the movie, the premise is, is that he's passed away, and and these people who are experts in this reviving Dead electronic people. thing mm -hmm. bring him back. Yeah, and they bring him back, and he's kind of like this soldier who's been trained and knows nothing but. But then he keeps having flashbacks. <gasps> oh, wait a second! Is that him? Wife. Well, that's not him, is it? Is that Vin Diesel? That's craziness. He's got laser eyes. A little scary, huh? Yeah. That could be anybody, though. Right? <laughs> it could. I mean, that could be you. That, I mean, with the right makeup. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I don't punch people. Sure you don't. Meghan Markle says that um, trying to cope with the media scrutiny that she's had, we talk about it off and on uh, because Harry has just, Harry and Meghan have um, just filed a lawsuit against um, a publisher in the UK for harassing her. And she said when she like she was an actress so she understood scrutiny and she understood you know being recognizable and stuff like that but she said i had no idea how difficult it is in the uk she said i i knew it would be bad but she said i thought it would at least be fair and it's not they they their tabloids are worse than the american tabloids right they, yeah. They've got several, three mm -hmm. major ones that are just ruthless. And of course, I mean, we have the national, not we, but there's a National Enquirer in the States, but it doesn't compare. No, no. And of course, he's, he's you know, thinking about his mother who was hounded right to her death, mm -hmm. literally. Mm -hmm. So he's very concerned about it. He doesn't like it very much. Hey, Ho. the masked singer. The, I didn't know they had one in Australia. Yes, they do. There's one in Australia. And your favorite person that you've been talking about the most very recently is Cody, Cody Simpson. Simpson. He won it. He's the new boyfriend of Miley Cyrus. Because she can't have nothing for like 30 seconds. Oh, who was I thinking of? Who's the, the Carter? Aaron Carter. Aaron Carter. Okay. Gosh, I was thinking, oh, Cody is so cute. I know, but I didn't know that. I thought he was a bigger... I, listen, I thought he was a bigger star than to be on The Masked Singer. There are big stars. Yeah. I know. Did I tell you that I know that The Flower is um, Patti oh. LaBelle? Oh, you did. I guarantee you. She's not on Masked yet, but I guarantee it's Patti LaBelle. So there are big names, but... He Cody, was the robot, and he won. In Australia. Yeah. There he is right there with yeah. his mask off. Isn't that cool? So that means they've, they've already finished theirs. We haven't yeah. finished ours yet here in North America. Of course, they're always ahead of us in Australia. <laughs> they're ahead. Oh, that's, that's a good segue. What? Qantas. Is that how you say it? Qantas, Qantas. Airlines? Oh, Qantas. Q-A-N-T-A-S. I thought you were That's talking about 
Quando, Quando, Quanta, Quantas Airlines from Australia. They have designed this lighter weight plane. Mm -hmm. They can now do a solid flight. New York to Sydney, 20 hours non-stop. There's never been a non-stop flight before from New York to Sydney, and there is one. Well, they just tried it out. They had um, specialists on board. They were monitoring um, they, the pilots, making sure that they had enough rest breaks and stuff between the pilots, and making sure passenger c comfort. What do they do for gas, I wonder? Uh, beans. Eat, eat airport food. Um, they, they eat beans and it's all natural. You eat them for 20 <laughs> hours and you fart your way to Sydney. That's you don't even need the plane. No. It's just there for your it's comfort. It's like Wonder Woman. It's like <laughs> all the way to Australia. <laughs> Thanks for those sound effects, Timothy. You're welcome. Timothy. So anyway, now if it's, a, if it's okay and everybody gets there and they're healthy, which it sounds like they were, yeah. there's no, no longer going to Hawaii Imagine or wherever that, else you had right? to go to get to, to Australia. 20 hours though. Wow. I hope you have extra leg room. I hope it's big enough you can get up and walk around easily. Have you ever been on a plane that's two stories? No. I would love to do that. Wouldn't they, that be fun? Yeah, like remember an, like an airport? Yes. They had like a spiral staircase up to the lounge where they all had cocktails and stuff. That was so civilized. I, I would so Until stick, somebody hit them and they crashed I'd their I'd stick deaths. my head down there going, hey, 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 tell the PNs <laughs> who can drink because they were- Are we out of time? We have to break. Yes. Because we're coming back with Vernon, Bailey, and Zonta to talk about, well, Heather from Zonta, to talk about Call of the Wild. This is up. so cool. Very cool. Don't, well, you've already seen part one with, with John McLaughlin, but now Vernon's live. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, he is barely. <laughs> Hi, Vernon. He's hanging on. Come and c come back and visit Vernon and Heather and me. Welcome back to Mornings with Luann and Tim, and I'm joined now by Heather Edwards from Zonta and Vernon Bailey. You might know Vernon as a, a local auctioneer. Gosh, how, like you do the Ontario, the entire Algoma district, don't you? Oh yes. How far do you travel, Vernon, at, to, when you do auctioneering? Uh, like, the I've been way? as far as Moosonee. No kidding. <laughs> to the north. Uh, wow. But most of my work's around Sault Ste. Marie. To and the Algoma Thessalon, District, Algoma. yeah, yeah. Now, Heather, you're the past president of Zonta. I am. Tell, uh, tell our viewers a little bit about Zonta in case they don't know Zonta's mission, the history of Zonta and Sault Ste. Marie, that sort of thing. Uh, Zonta is a local women's service group and uh, we work hard to serve the women of Sault Ste. Marie and area. And we also have an international connection with Zonta International. Uh, there is a Zonta International. There is, okay. yes. Uh, Zonta is in 62 countries wow. across the world. And um, we, uh, we serve the women of Sault Ste. Marie, uh, hoping to empower them. And, uh, we should, I guess we should say them. women and young ladies and girls too, and right? Girls I mean, too we run well. the gamut for age. You Absolutely. Have, tell me about the scholarships, because that's one of the ways that you support younger women in, in, uh, and, and girls, right? Right. Um, Zante is all about education and literacy, and we support young women in all of the five high schools in our area with annual scholarships. We also support Sioux College and Algoma University. With scholarships as well. With scholarships, yes. And this year um, we have added new scholarships, uh, act actually awards. We uh -huh. have uh, women in business, women in technology, women in aviation, and we also have an existing award for young women in public affairs. Wow. So we fund all of those scholarships and Vernon has agreed to help us with that this year and we are oh so happy about that. Now you guys have a standing relationship. I mean not the two of you personally because Tracy McKitty would not be crazy about that would she? Uh, <laughs> never mind. So you but through Zonta Vernon. Right. Tell me about the relationship that you already have with Zonta through fundraising. Actually uh, it started over 20 some years ago oh. that I started doing auctions for the Zonta Club. Did not know that. Uh, oh, it was it was an art. That was way before yeah. my 
<laughs> it was a, a, an art auction at the time, and okay. we did that uh, for a while, and then Zonda kind of changed how they did fundraisers. Yes. And about four years ago, I met with Heather's group, the current <laughs> group, and, and we did... Uh, put together they were planning a purse auction and we added pies to it as well and now so we sell you call pies it, and purses this is all this is this is a sellout right for you this four is, years this is purses pies and pino when did it happen it's already happened this year right it has yeah. it happens in september every year because we the proceeds from purses pies and pino go to ovarian cancer ah, and so it's timely half of the proceeds do the other half go to local service projects and um, we support uh, we support ovarian cancer through the month of September. Wow! And so Vernon auctions off these purses and pies, but the purses have prizes inside them as well, and, and the ladies don't know exactly what they're bidding on or what's inside their purse. Sounds like so much fun. It's very It's cool. a sellout, though. So when do tickets for that go on sale, just so people can know next year to get their tickets uh, early? They'll go on sale June next Start year. Start looking for those tickets in, yeah. in June. But now, let's focus on what's happening right now. Vernon, you have two shows with John McLaughlin that you've... McClellan. Did I say McLaughlin? Yes, you did. McCallaghan? <laughs> yes. I hope I called him that in the interview. I think I said it wrong in the interview too. John McCallaghan. Oh, John, I'm so sorry. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm off to a great start. You and John have two shows as part of your repertoire. Right. One is the uh, down of uh, the farm. What? Life, Life on, on the, the farm. farm. And the other is the Call of the Wild. Call of the Wild. Yeah. Now, the one you're performing for Zonta is Call of the Wild. Yes. Tell yeah. me about the show. Uh, it features the poetry of uh, Robert Service, basically. Uh, I, I've always loved Robert Service for his ability to tell a story, but maybe more importantly for me, it's his imagery. Yeah. Every time I read one of his poems or say one of his poems, I see the scenery. Yeah. Like he, it's just amazing. He paints, he paints a picture with he, his words. Yeah, um, the way he brings it, and he paints a, the person he's telling the story about. You can. I always can see that person. I visualize the person, and it's funny. I every time I say that same poem, I visualize the same person. <laughs> like I, I can see, see really? he becomes a character in my mind, and I'm probably others as well. But. Storytelling and, and poetry have a really nice history for you and your family. Tell me about that, yeah. Vernon. Uh, my grandfather, uh, who I didn't really know, he died when I was four. But I heard so many stories about. It. I do remember have a couple glimpses of him that I remember um, but he was a, a fantastic storyteller uh, I've been told he knew thousands of little ditties Irish songs and stuff and they he just blurt them out when that that subject twigged in his mind uh -huh. or if you said something that reminded him and then all his sons um, so your father my father being one of them they all had terrific memories and new poems and quite frankly I never remember seeing my dad memorize anything but they were there. <laughs> you Heather like you said that Vernon t takes after the family tradition he has a mind like a steel trap. Oh like a vault for <laughs> sure. He, really? You have got to come and see this performance because he it's pure entertainment. Uh, Vernon will blow your mind. And you die, and there, there's like 50, how many poems are in this? Um, I would the say wild, about there's, yeah, there's 16 18 poems. And one of these poems is five minutes long. Oh, over, over, oh, yeah. Actually, one's lo uh, about seven, but we break, it's uh, called The Ballad of the Black Fox Skin. Uh-huh. And uh, it, it's kind of written like a four-act play. The poem itself. The poem itself. And uh, so I, I do one of the sections, and then John sings a verse of Amazing Grace. John McCallaghan. <laughs> yeah. And then we do another <laughs> section, he sings an the next verse of Amazing Grace, we work it in. Uh, that so you really turn these different poems into performance pieces, yeah. like multi, multi, yeah. yeah. And it's not like what I find with uh, Rob with this show. You don't have to like some shows. You you have a start, you have a middle, and an ending, and they're supposed to be all the theme has to be all connected. But with a Robert Service poem, 
there's a big it's a it's a whole new a whole, whole new every, play every, every poem is, is its own a, own play yeah. its own play yeah you're alone in this other I mean you it's, it's a two act show starring yeah. Vernon and John McCallahan with songs intermittent yeah uh, it starts off with John right when the people first arrive John right. serenades them sort of thing is yeah. that right he'll start playing uh, this is at the Legion right yeah this is at the Legion and November the second. second second tickets available at the Legion in the station mall at the shoe the shoe fits and yes. his, or any Zonta member hey there's a poster up right now for you guys so that's what Michael's put oh, up oh that's awesome okay. so it, doors open when then uh, Heather doors open at 6 okay. uh, John starts playing at 645 bit of a serenade for yeah. Yeah. warm up the yeah. audience yeah and then Vernon goes on at 7 7 o'clock show starts right two acts cash bar yes yeah Treats available by donation, is that correct? That's correct. Lovely. Uh, desserts based, baked by Zonta bakers. So, the history of Robert Service, you were introduced to him, uh, I mean, you've known him all of your life as a, yeah. as a poet. Yeah. Northwest Territories, is that right? Like, was he up in the Yukon? Yukon, yes. Yukon. Yes, uh, he went there as a bank teller for the CIBC. Yeah. Uh, during the gold rush. Yeah. And so, there's quite of a... Quite a section of his work is based around his time that he spent in the Yukon, and that's base, basically what I feature in the in show, the Call, of the Call, Call of the Wild. And you, you and uh, John, as we mentioned in, in the interview with John, have done this as a fundraiser for many hospitals out in the district. Yeah. You've also done the other show, uh, Life on the Farm, right? At the Twelve Sided Barn. What's that called now? That barn? Well, that's basically the Twelve Sided <laughs> Barn. You're all over the place, but this is your debut in Sault Ste. Marie proper. Right. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Because people have been. Begging Vernon, you know, don't make us drive to Echo Bay or Deborah or Thessalon. Come to Sault Ste. Marie, and so he has. This is your chance. Yep. Right. Not only to support Vernon, to support to support Zonta for yes. heaven's sake. Yep, young woman in Sault Ste. Marie. Okay, so there you go. Yep. And John and I have always done it. The uh, one hundred percent of our shows has all gone to charity. To charity. Yeah, uh, like uh, good on you, Vernon. Uh, the mm -hmm. uh, Arch Hospice. We've done. Uh, yeah. Three three different. Uh, four actually for them. Yeah, and that's Lon as well, the hospitals and stuff. So anyway, here you go. Here's your chance to support Zonta and check out this really unique show starring Vernon Bailey and John McCallahan at the Legion. Tickets available at the Legion to shoe fits from Zonta members November the 2nd, 6.30, the doors open. 6 o'clock. 6 o'clock, show yeah. 7 o'clock. Yeah. See you there. We'll be right back with Luann after this. Thanks for joining us. Okay. Thank you. home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room. Create privacy, or both, automatically, no hands required. So your shades will always be in the right place, at the right time, in style. And it's only from Hunter Douglas. Thank you so much to KC Security for always sponsoring the morning show. We appreciate it, you guys. And we'll see you tonight for the uh, election live right here at ONNTV.ca, SueOnline.com. Uh, 8 o'clock. 8 o'clock. We're here 8 till 10, and then the results come in after that. Absolutely. So stay tuned. Thanks for watching. In your home, lighting is just as important as style. With PowerView Motorization from Hunter Douglas, you can schedule your shades to light up the room. Create privacy, or both, automatically, no hands required. So your shades will always be in the right place, at the right time, in style. And it's only from Hunter Douglas.